Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 506. <laughs> Still feels weird going over the 500. But anyway, 506, and the topic today is actually a serious one, which is see something, do something. And it concerns the B2 movement and some other things besides that. Before I get to that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful women find and create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day I do these talks called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart, which this is now episode number 400. Sorry. I moved out of 400s, 506. <laughs> Let's track for a second. And the topic today is um, see something, do something. And this is a call to action and also a challenge and also a reminder. I think that covers the gamut. Um, what inspired this actually was a friend's post um, around a Tantra community. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to name any names, going to keep this off of this format. You can see the post on my wall if you want to check it out. By the way, this is a Facebook Live, so it's on my Facebook wall. In case you're watching this on YouTube later on, I'll give you the links to both after I finish or when I finish this up so you know where I'm going. Just covering all the bases. So I saw this post on a friend's wall, which I then also shared out. Um, it was an article on Medium to label the platform about a, um, a Tantra teaching community, the best way I can phrase it, where there's a lot of this no, I say there's another way. Where there's basically behavior being done that does not support the community, does not support the teaching, and it's just as bad as it is in the entertainment community, business, in the entertainment community, in politics, in religion, and in so many other places. I guess the thing I was trying to say in the, when I posted the article was, so there's Me Too conversations and sexual harassment and, and sexual misconduct happening in politics and in religion and in the entertainment industry and in sports, after what happened with the hearing from the US Olympic Committee. Why should the personal growth industry be any different, in a way? Because the truth is, there's no less, if, and maybe even more, crossing that line happening in the personal growth industry as a whole. And I've been in the personal growth industry since 1984, so I've been in this, com this community for a long time. And I'm realizing in the past, I've probably seen things without realizing it and not acted on it. So I'm, I'm calling myself forward on this as well. In this context, it was a Tantra community where the head of the organization, who basically is looked upon as some, by some, and I can tell just by reading the article, and I suspect it's true from what I've seen from other people, is looked upon as somewhat of a deity. That the head of the organization is so revered and so loved because I presume he created this movement, this group, and I've been in organizations like that, where the head of the organization is looked upon as some sort of deity and superior being, which is total bullshit but we fall into that trap. It's almost a human condition that we raise other people onto, pillar, onto um, podiums and onto um, a higher level than we think we can achieve. It's kind of the teacher-student mindset sometimes, which is really something we need to change, I believe. In the article, it talks about how some of the, some of the women in that organization have experienced and shared their stories of his crossing the line with them. Now, this is it. Now, bear in mind, this is Tantra community. This is sexuality. Well, let me, let me back up a second. <laughs> Tantra in the West is presumed to be about sex. And that is actually a mistaken approach because Tantra doesn't mean that. Tantra is actually a whole different subject, but it happens to include that context as well. So, in this Tantra group, which is mostly sexual healing centric, well, it's supposed to be sexual healing centric. Hang on a second. Blow my nose for a moment. Hang on one second. I'll try and not do it over the microphone. Keep it, keeping it light. You know, because I have a microphone down here, I don't want to blow it out with a sneeze while I'm blowing my nose right on top of it. Anyway, back on topic. So, this individual who was the head of the organization and very much in charge had been, and it's been reported more than one place, it seems, to have been someone who was disrespecting women by the way he approached them, the way he taught them, and he was crossing the line, and also teaching people to do things without, con um, sorry, having people do things without the teaching involved. There were things happening where there were individuals who were let loose on each other without understanding what was being involved. And that, meant for some, that made for some really messed up experiences. 
I'm saying this to say that there are apparently a few people in his organization who were actually at the organization, not students, but the organization, including somebody I know, who've been protecting him. And basically pl taking it lightly and not making a big deal about it. Now, again, I'm not saying any names because I don't want out anybody this way because it's not the right format for me to do this because it's become slanderous otherwise. But I'm very aware that I'm, I'm feeling this frustration with people who don't speak the truth about situations. They rather save their job than out the perpetrators. So this I'm taking outside the context of this tantra conversation, just about any organization, any family dynamic, because it happens to families too, any paradigms where sexual encroachment, sexual abuse, actually abuse of any kind, but power, domination, techniques, which is what these all come under heading of really, power and, sorry, power and control techniques, let me put it that way, that are being perpetrated on people just for the sake of the person who's doing it. Actually, period. That's crossing a line. In my book, it's crossing a line. And I'm, I'm calling myself out to say that I will choose, I, I'm committing to stepping up, speaking up. Now, I'm inviting you to do the same, but I'm also saying this, this piece as well. Well, I'll say it this way. We have to get us. We, we need to make sure we have a fact straight. Sometimes there's hearsay, and I've heard of stories, and I know of stories because I actually got. I'll speak for myself. Um, let me say this this way. Seven or eight years ago, um, this is my spiritual community. I was the head of a ministry, um, running a team of about sixty people, and being very much making things happen in very, very effective ways. We basically, we're running the, um, the usher ministry at, at Agape, my spiritual center, to put it simply in terms, and running the ushers, and also the guest relations, and help basically help people get into seats, hand out programs, get everybody organized and watch everything else. Did that, I did that for about 10 years, so I was very, you know, established. Somebody said to the powers that be that I was sexually harassing them. I had, I had, I didn't know who it was at the time, because I didn't, I, I, I don't, it's not my thing. I had not done that. But she basically did it because it turned out I found out afterwards, just so you know, this happens. I found out afterwards for a friend of mine who was in on the conversation. It turns out that really what happened was she was upset because I wasn't approaching her and being friendly to her like I was to other women. She was jealous. So she basically called out on me of something I didn't do to get me in trouble. I got fired from the ministry. And the thing was, and this is what really got frustrating for me personally, although I'm now looking at it as a blessing, is I wasn't able to defend myself. There was no position. It's like I was simply, what I heard was I'm being removed from the ministry and I didn't even know why at the time. They told me afterwards because somebody was willing to tell me or because apparently you've been accused of sexual harassment. I'm like, what the, f you know, it was like, excuse me? So having said that, and I've been through that experience of being falsely accused, that as much as I want to say when you see something, do something, is be really clear of what you're seeing. To be really willing to find out or to know. And if it's happened to you, you know already, so there's no need to go through this piece. But reality is, for some of us, we hear things, we see things, and we jump on the bandwagon. And my my word of caution to you, and it's one I've got to watch for myself, because I've actually posted articles, not in this context, but other contexts, where I found out afterwards it was a fake article, it was a false article, it wasn't true. So I had to take it down again, because I, I, I jumped on a bandwagon without realizing it. So in this context, when it comes to the Me Too conversation, the Me Too movement, and women particularly, but men as well, who get hurt, wounded, abused by some other predator or um, controlling and power-driven person, be clear, it's ha be clear it's happening first, and secondly, then do something about it, whether it is to interact, intercede, save that person in a way, not save them as a victim, but to get them out of the situation, or to report them all you need to do. But the point is that we cannot be bystanders in this conversation. When it comes to the Me Too conversation, we must be involved. And it's not like an either or, it's what is. This is not something you pretend doesn't happen. I know of many of my friends who've been through sexual harassment, sexual abuse with their children, family dynamics with their parents. I, and some of my clients have been through that. So I know very, very first hand, well, first hand to experience, seeing the experience in front of me, I'll put it that way. So it happens more than we know And so don't be surprised how often you hear about it. 
but again I want to say this clearly know the learn the get to know the facts as best you can and then speak about it as you know the facts but don't sit still and do nothing because there's no time for that anymore we're, we're at a turning point in our civilization I believe in a culture that's waking everybody up but some people are going to wake up kicking and screaming someone's been on this path for a longer time so we've had that part happen in the past and now we're a bit more um, calm about the experience <laughs> but be clear about this that it's this is not time to be a be a um, innocent bystander or a um, hear no evil see no evil speak no evil type person it may be time to speak the truth hear the truth and to um, see the truth let's remember which three I said just said just then and that's what I want to say today I wanted to I mean I know it's Saturday but it's a weekend hasn't just casually it's a lightweight normally sharing but I need to put this out there and if you want to look on my wall on Facebook you'll see my post about this and my feelings about it and this just this is for me as an underlining stating the same thing it's time for us to step up speak up and act up to really wake up the culture and especially especially now seeking this genre in the personal growth arena the personal growth industry it's a big industry a lot of people are in it and I've seen power abuse before not sexual abuse but power abuse and I've actually left organization because of that because I wasn't going to play in those games where the people running the organization mistreated their volunteers that was one of my pet peeves in fact I would simply leave organizations I wouldn't I wouldn't take their trainings I wouldn't invest in them if they didn't respect the volunteers and that to me is one of my guidelines so in fact if you have the experience I'll say this if you're, if you're in personal growth seminars and workshops I highly recommend you find out what the volunteer experience is like if the volunteers working for the organization serving in the seminars and workshops are not treated with love and kindness and care you may want to think of rethink your investment with them. I've only volunteered for organizations that I know, and from experience, that they care about the volunteers. And that, for me, is a, is a touchstone or a guidance for me in the personal growth industry. Add to that when they mistreat their um, participants. It's time we change this. The personal growth industry was the place for me when I started that was so much about integrity, um, depth, and value beyond the status of people's careers it doesn't get to be immune to this conversation and it does not get to have a have a pass this is included because people are people doing things to other people doesn't matter what the organization is so the personal growth industry which is about awareness and waking up and being more conscious and being more present hasn't done its work fully for people who don't realize they're doing this for other people so we get to be the messengers we get to be the speakers we get to be the in some ways the alarm callers we need to step this up and speak this up because frankly it's time to change this we need to change the conversation that simple so with that whew, I thank you for watching this was one of those talks that wasn't meant to be like a light it wasn't, it wasn't going to be a light joyful one it was going to be like you know blunt but that's the way it was so um, quick recap this is Facebook Live First you can watch it on YouTube as well also my podcast so let me give you the links for those three on Facebook, they're archived on my business page, which is easy to find because my personal page has all sorts of stuff on it, including a post of the article about this. Um, that is on Facebook at barryselby.author. You can watch me on YouTube, which is um, my username and channel is Barry Selby. The playlist is Messages from the Masculine. And then on my podcast, because I'm pointing these on my podcast slowly but surely, you can listen to the audio versions when you're driving, cycling, doing other things in the world where you, want, where you can't watch, but you can listen. If you go to Messages from the Masculine on, park, on iTunes, you can download and subscribe to my podcast. Oh, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, 506 broadcasts. Plenty of content out there for you to watch and digest and learn from. With that, thank you for watching. I'll be back in tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time, as usual. Um, something different, probably. We'll see. I appreciate you being with me. Take care.